We human beings are defined and remembered by our actions. But sometimes what triggers those actions, what motivates those actions, we fail to understand. To fully understand a person, we need to understand the personality, his or her upbringing, the short term and long term goals and most importantly the psychology of the person. For any criminal investigation, the motive or the psychology of the criminal is always given utmost importance. Not only to prosecute the criminal, the motive and the psychology of the criminal is thoroughly understood to prevent future crime. Michael Mann is one of the greatest American filmmakers who has done a lot of successful films in this crime genre. Today we are going to discuss and analyze one character from Michael Mann's 1995 crime drama Heat. This is the 25th year of this film and also there is a news that Michael Mann is going to make a prequel of this film. There are mixed reactions worldwide about this news but we are not going to discuss about the prequel. We are going to discuss about the character of Vincent Hanna from the film Heat. We need to understand some background about this film and about the character. The plot of Heat was based on Michael Mann's previous television movie LA Takedown. Mann made this television movie in 1989. Michael Mann had very good friendships with lot of high ranking officers in Chicago Police Department. Some of them are Charlie Adamson and Dennis Farina. Charlie Adamson was investigating different armed robbery cases in 1960s. Among one of them was about Neil McCauley. Yes, Neil McCauley was a real life person in Chicago and Neil McCauley was killed by Charlie Adamson in an attempt of armed robbery in 1963. The character of Vincent Hanna in Heat was loosely based on these real life people like Charlie Adamson and Dennis Farina. Also Michael Mann did a TV movie in 1979. It was The Jericho Miles. For this television movie, he was shooting inside the California Folsom prison. He got ample knowledge about the criminal minds when he was shooting inside Folsom prison. Throughout his career, we can see those ample knowledge about the criminal minds and also the minds of investigators. That makes a Michael Mann's movie memorable. In the film, we get some glimpses of Lieutenant Vincent Hanna's background and the formation years. We know that he was a college graduate, then he joined the Marine Corps. We don't know who, whether he is a war veteran or not, but we know that he joined the Chicago Police Department and then he joined the LAPD, the Los Angeles Police Department. We also know he was previously in Narcotics Department and at the time period of the film, he was in the robbery and homicide department and he was among the elite officers of major crime unit. Now let's discuss about the psychological traits of Lieutenant Vincent Hanna. Michael Mann provides a lot of useful information about Lieutenant Vincent Hanna in this film. So we know that he is a restless person. All the scenes wherever we see Vincent Hanna, it seems he is kind of restless. Uh, he is always running, he is always uh, on the go, on the edge. So we see, we know that he is restless. Also we get the feeling that he is a lonely person. 
there is a scene when the crew of Vincent Hanna was looking at the crew of Neil Macaulay. When they were identifying the crew members, Vincent asked this question, who is the loner? It seems that he was able to connect to that person because he himself believes that he is lonely. I have seen different interviews of Michael Mann about heat and everywhere he mentions that Hannah is a predator running after his prey. It gives him an elevated experience when he is hunting and it brings out the intuitiveness, the mindfulness when he is going after, running after his prey. Vincent Hanna is not the typical police officer out there to serve and protect. He is a different guy. He is running after his hunts. He is prowling each and every night behind his prey. Let's discuss about the relationships and social life of Vincent Hanna. So from the film we see that Hanna has already had two failed marriages and this is his third marriage and we can feel that there is some tension in the marriage. It's not going well. His wife feels she is excluded from his life and he doesn't spend much time at home. We see that he is not a typical husband who comes back home and spends time with his wife and child. And he himself tells that my life is a disaster zone. Yeah, he acknowledged. So we can easily identify there is a big difference in the success of his professional life and the failure in his personal life. In professional life, he is very much intuitive, very successful, very well respected. As an example, he can recreate the entire crime scene by just looking at the evidence. Yes, but in his personal life, we see he had two failed marriages and the third one is also not going well. He prefers to run after the guys like Neil Macaulay night after night rather than going back home and doing the dishes. understand this gap between Hana's success in professional life and failure in personal life, we need to understand his psychology. Somehow we get the feeling that deep inside there are some psychological issues. In the scene with Alfred, one of his informant, when he is trying to extract the information, he looked kind of desperate. He was shouting like a maniac. It's, it's so much desperation to extract some kind of information. Keeps the hint. He has some psychological issues. We see him restless throughout the film. And this desperation like a maniac this ego like a maniac, it hints to some deeper psychological problems. Maybe he had a rough childhood or maybe he had some hyperactivity disorder in childhood. Studies show that 8% of American population suffers from a very common psychological disorder called ADHD. Looking at this character of Vincent Hanna, I found some similarity between his character and any patient suffering from ADHD. This restlessness, this desperations and also we see that Hannah is not very good with scheduling. There was a scene in the middle of the night, it was almost dawn uh, when there was a failed attempt to get uh, Neil Macaulay's crew. He says to his team, 
let's get back to work he is not very good at every job maybe in his professional life he is a success he is very very uh, intuitive and efficient but in his personal life he is a failure this is also very common among adhd patients also another interesting insight in the entire film we don't see any scene where vincent hana is interacting with his superiors his bosses it would have been very interesting to see how he reacts when the bosses don't agree to him another interesting thing vincent hana has very low language skill he used lot of uh, foul words uh, in maybe every sentence uh, when we see him interacting with others for example with his wife even with neil macaulay we see the other person had better language skill than him another uh, common characteristics of adhd patients but also studies show this uh, adhd patients uh, 50% of them outgrow this uh, disorder when they gets adult so what happens the experts say that they somehow develop some compensatory strategies from within so what's vincent hana's compensatory strategy yes it's that hunting it's that running behind his prey that makes him the predator this is his cure regime this gives him that elevated experience and he is always running behind that elevated experience in the entire film we see only once he is very very relaxed that is when he is interacting with neil macaulay the entire film we see he is restless even when he is making love to his wife he seemed little bit restless but with neil macaulay he was entirely calm he was sharp he was aware but he was calm he felt relaxed so this is his compensatory strategy and he also acknowledges he agrees he says i keep the angst it keeps me sharp yes so this elevated experience this mindfulness when he is hunting that is his cognitive behavioral therapy for his psychological disorder in the famous coffee shop scene when vincent hana was face to face with neil macaulay vincent brought the point of his dream the recurring dream he has in that dream he sees all the victims of all the crimes he investigated they don't say any word they just stare at him now here we uh, get the feeling that he is trying to relate himself with all those victims this is the answer to the question what motivates hana yes he sees himself in those victims and he tries to preserve life he tries to protect the people from being another victim of crime this is what motivates vincent hana and the hunting of the criminals gives him that elevated experience as part of his cure regime we also see that he is very much aware about himself he says i do what i do so he knows and he also says i am what i am going after so he knows that he needs that elevated experience to keep him sane also we see that he has no hesitation and he makes very quick decision only when he is hunting during that uh, downtown shootout we see no hesitation when he kills sherito he handles the failures in his personal life 
and failures in his professional life very differently. He gets very frustrated uh, when he sees that his wife has brought another person in his home. He vent his frustration on the television set. But in his professional life, when he was almost convinced that Neil Macaulay and his crew are gone, he was very calm. He said to his team, he is going for one month's sleep in a hotel room. So that's a different approach to the failure. He was not frustrated. Even he said, bon voyage, happy journey to Neil Macaulay. And he knew he is going to the emptiness for one month before he gets a new prey, a new motivation for that elevated experience. So we understand that Vincent Hanna has found his cure, has found his compensatory strategy in the elevated experience only when he is hunting his prey. That brings the mindfulness, that mindfulness brings the intuition, the pattern recognition in him only when he is hunting. <laughs>